It was getting them used to and being aware of the. We only trained three months before and I ended up placing third, but it was because of this style of training. We're always trying to have you recover through movement. All right, guys, we're back with another episode of Strong Bull, Strong Bull Podcast. We are with Rob today. We're going to go over the chaotic capacity template. He's actually screen recording right now, so that way you'll see what it looks like, run through a couple of workouts, what to expect, things like that. I think this would be a fun, fun vibe for us to make sure you know, out there. Our biggest thing is scaling our awareness and whatnot to get people to understand what we're doing, why we're doing it, and how they can benefit from it, even outside of the supplements. Rob, you can take it away. No, going into the next chapter, it, the chaotic capacity is a method that I was working on, and I use a lot of different principles of different aerobic methods, basically of conditioning on there. And so when we were going and I was putting it together, I was working on it for a while. And really it's for anybody that wants to pick up their conditioning in when it comes to either any endurance sport or CrossFit, especially mixed modality. When it comes to it, I was realizing that a lot of the mainstream stuff that we were seeing out there wasn't blending or lending itself really well to what would happen to the, the chaos that would happen in a mixed modality workout in a CrossFit workout. Yep. And that's when I started to work on it. And when I was working on it, I was working on with a bunch of different athletes. And what I was doing is I was blending a lot of intervals, power, short rest, longer, aerobic, anaerobic, and then zone two work all together in there. And then as time was going on, it started to kind of fit itself into Mm -hmm. basically kid at capacity. Right. So what I want to do is I want to go over a week of it and who it'll benefit. It'll benefit anyone. And what we did was the way we laid out this template is it's a couple of add-ons a week and you can add this on to what you're doing. And it's not going to really take away a lot from your workouts that I see, because what I see a lot of times is when people add too much aerobic work or too high intensity, mm -hmm. it's just going to get to their nervous system. Right. And I was trying to work around that. And what this is, is trying to keep you aware of workouts by pacing being aware in the workout where you're at and how does it feel. So on week one, as I look in and I'll pick this up, when you guys go into it, it's two to three rounds on there. And you'll start with an air bike. I really like air bike and rower a lot. You see I use, but you'll see us use all different tools in there. So it starts out with a 30 seconds and we have pacing and RPE that we use a lot. And the reason why I have pacing and wattage with that, with RPE is sometimes your pace is going to feel different than what an RPE is. Right. Um, so Some days you, you're not hundred percent every day. Correct. And RPE is the one you're going to go off. Of. So sometimes if the pace feels like, it's like I, last time I did this row at a 500 and I was at a two minute pace, this is too much. I need to go to a 205. I want you to be aware of where you feel and what you're doing right. at the time. So you'll start out, it says 30 seconds at three to 400 watt RPE of two to three, which is really easy. Then you'll see us move right to a 30 second, 50 to 150 recovery. What we try to do in here is we're always trying to have you recover through movement. So you almost never stop moving. Then you'll go through that. Then the next time around, you'll go right to a 30 because basically it's a 30, 30. So then you're going to 30 at even more elevated wattage and RPE. Then you go back to the recovery pace. And then you'll notice on this first workout, you kind of increase it as it goes. And then once you go ahead and you do that, it goes through minute one block minute two block, minute three, and minute four, and then you finish five. So basically it's five sets of the 30-30 with an escalating effort. But the rest effort is the same. Then once you hit that last five, you're going to go directly into a thousand meter row and there's paces broken up. And you'll see it on, starts with zero to 500. You have a two minute to 210 pace. So RPE is three to four. Then as you're going, you should be recovering. You're going to increase that pace a little bit. But the whole time, is you're able to keep your heart rate at a certain place. Right. Then you're going to go to 500 to 800. That's 150 to 155. That's an RP of five to six. And then the last 200, when you see us increase it, and then the last 200, you're going to increase it from 800 to 1,000 meters. You're going to do 150 or above. And then you're going to finish off at an RP of seven to eight. We're going to go ahead and rest five minutes. Then we're going to do that two to three more times. On it. So that's kind of one version that we have laid out for the week. Every week we have one workout that's set up and it's a little more interval based and the other workout's going to be a little more longer zone based. And you have two workouts per week. So the next one you, you go into would be two to three rounds of a zone two work of an RP of three to five at the most. 3,000 meter biker, just pacing, conversation pace, 1,200 meter row, and then you have 500 meter ski. And you just keep on moving through that. You'll stay in that zone two if you can, no more than zone three that entire time. We're looking at you to work for around 30 to 40 minutes, continuous pace. Mm -hmm. So those are two workouts that we had on that was week one. And th yeah. th those are just the samples. Right. And <clears throat> this is what this is what we did uh, 2018, 
I was 10 months off of CrossFit. And basically you implemented this into my training protocol where it was less lifting more on this because I was always weak at cardio. Yeah. So we only trained three months before Granite and I ended up placing third, but it was because of this style of training where I'm working the said 30, 40 minutes once, maybe twice a week, and then hitting once, maybe twice a week of something like that first workout where it's teaching me how to recover while working on well, recover while moving, but also recover while doing breaks too. So like different styles. Cause sometimes in CrossFit, you might have a four minute AMRAP with a two minute rest and then go back and do that same AMRAP, or you might have a longer transition period. So I might have to do something where I'm doing like handstand walks hundred feet and then running back. So I'm trying to recover all the way down to the next move. So it's setting you up for like real world in CrossFit space It's setting you up to be successful on your recovery, whether full breaks or active breaks. Uh, so that's why like it, this is the reason I end up getting podium. So when living with you, but what I started seeing with individuals is it was getting them used to and being aware of their heart rate moving around a lot. Mm -hmm. And in CrossFit workouts, a lot of times you're going from one thing and you do another thing, your blood pressure is going to go all over. And, it, and it's trying to recover in movement. But I went over a week on there. And, and as you go over, you'll look at the weeks as they move and progress. The, the workouts become a lot different. But really what I was trying to do is have athletes understand fatigue and, under, and let them understand how to manage it in a chaotic setting, right. basically. Right. And the more that they understood and they feel it, and it's a feeling that's similar to what they're going to do out, out on the floor, the more comfortable they're going to be yeah. being in that situation. Because one thing I noticed a lot is, even in the opener, is when people would do it twice, the second time they do better. Because that first time they were unaware of what it was going to feel mm -hmm. like. But the second time when you are aware of the feeling and you go into it and you're like, oh, this is where I'm getting taxed. I've been here before. I'm more comfortable being taxed and I right. can operate at this higher heart rate. Yeah. You go into it and you're like, oh, this is where I'm getting taxed. I've been here before. I'm more comfortable being taxed and I right. can operate at this higher heart rate. You get good at pushing and pulling the pace mm -hmm. because you know what it feels like in training because you're, again, you know, this style of training, you might be hopping around three or four different things even though it might be the same machine or two different machines, the pacing's different, intensity, RPE, all of that. So you're training your body and your mind to understand like, all right, I'm feeling this, I need to pull back. I'm feeling this, I can go. So that's that's what you know, crushes. This, to me, this is the best way to get your capacity up. Without going and actually doing right. the workout and then beating the nervous system and the joints and stuff yeah, even you're, more. You're eliminating a lot of the technique as well. If we got to do a Fran style workout or what is it, Isabel, with yeah. all the snatching, how can we put ourselves in that same intensity without again like you said the taxing i might be able to hit the air bike for a certain amount of intervals and sets and reps or whatever and then hop off and hit the it was the biggest thing was trying to figure out how to mimic being under fatigue mm -hmm. without actually putting them through that fatigue mechanically with those moves right because that's so much more damaging to them mm -hmm. so if i can mimic the fatigue through using air bikes and rowers and skiers and have them feel what it feels like to be there and make it like very really close to what it was going to happen they'd be much more comfortable in that environment exactly yeah. so all right y'all check it out uh, go to the website we have a ton of templates on there we'll be going through a lot more of them like our athletic development we have um, power building all different styles that you can just plug and play add to your current training program or you can match what we have to make it one complete program so yeah stay tuned for the next one see y'all later